Thanks for waiting. I know some of you guys were waiting for this. We said we would be on around six o'clock central time and I was sort of waiting for my husband to take the baby out on a run so we would have a little more peace and quiet. Um, so I'm gonna just share this and then wait for Jessica to come on. And Jessica, if you are on, I might need to figure this out. Um, say hello when you get here. I will send you a quick message. Okay. Um, and quickly share this out and make sure my volume is down. Kelsey, hi Kelsey, how's it going? Um, okay, my Facebook thinks that we're not gonna be on for three more minutes. So let's just see what we can do about that. Um, how's it going, Kelsey? Whoops. Okay. Okay, who else is here? Jess, are you here yet? Let's see. It's not showing me. Um, what is this? Let me know when you are on. So tonight, you guys, this is actually um, really fun. I've been wanting to do these Food Rebel chats for a long time. And so what a better way to start than to have an amazing story about health. Um, and Jessica is one of my very good friend's younger sister. And um, when I heard about her story, you know, I actually knew about this right from when it was going on in real lifetime. And of course your heart just um, drops when you know like a family or a friend who has a health condition um, that could be seen as, you know, very, very serious. And so this is such a good story and it's probably gonna be like, you know, something you've never heard before, but the reason that I'm doing these Food Rebel chats and um, launching my podcast under the same name is because I want to make it way more normal to hear this kind of story. For us to know that these options are available to us at all times, that there is a way, there is a method. Oh, she's on. Okay, can you see a button that says request to join? Because I'm not seeing. Oh, wait, oh, I just saw it. There you go. Okay, all right, I'm inviting you, Jessica. Again, it should pull you up as long as your phone is sideways, right? If you're typing. Thanks for your patience, everyone. It says that it's adding you. It says that it's adding you. And everyone else, if you feel called to share this on your own Facebook pages, or tag friends, then go for Hi. it. Do it. We appreciate it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> my, I had like a lock screen, and so even though my phone was rotated, it wasn't like picking up on it. Yeah. So. Oh, shoot. Just no worries. Adjust this here. Hi. Sure. Hi. How's it going? Did you have good. a good day? Yes, I did. I did. How about you? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it kind of went quick. Um, but that's good. I've been so excited to do this ever since we decided yeah, to do me it. Me too. I'm so honored. Of course. Well, you have a really good story, and I love the way that you look at life and health. So I think the more people that can share about that, the better. And I know it's part of your passion as well now, like kind of living out what you've learned. Yeah. Um, so I was just telling everyone how we kind of know each other through camp. Yep. Um, <laughs> So, do you want me to call you Jessica or Jess or Jessie? Um, Jess is fine. Jess, okay. So, um, 
Jess's sister Kim is one of my girlfriends who is a dietitian that I met when I had gone back to school to become a dietitian kind of later in life and like our husbands know each other and so um, I, I have heard about you know her family on and off and so when this happened of course you know it was hard to hear and we're so excited about your results and your story um, but that's the connection. And so I wanted to start featuring people who have these amazing stories and have these, um, you know, strategies that they've used that have been very powerful in their lives and what you're doing with it now. Um, so we might as well just get started. So I'll let you like kind of formally introduce yourself. I mean, this is not formal at all. <laughs> I'm not formal at all. It's like so casual. Um, but it's real life. So just tell everybody, um, you know, who you are, what you do. And then if you want to jump in and just kind of start out with like, what was life like? And then kind of what happened? Yeah. Okay, so I'm Jess. Um, I didn't hear the first part of the live. Um, but yeah, I am 24 years old. I'm currently in chiropractic school in Overland Park, Kansas, where I'm um, on my third year, which is super exciting. I didn't know if I'd make it this far, to be honest. But um, yeah, <laughs> so doing that and um, just kind of trying to keep up with the student life and um, share my story as much as possible. So connecting with like-minded individuals just keeps me going and keeps my fire lit um, while I'm in school. Um, but yeah, so my story kind of started when I was 20 years old. Um, I was in undergrad at the University of Iowa, just a completely normal college student, loved to party, loved to have a good time, um, super social, um, and that's kind of when everything changed for me. Um, I was diagnosed with grade three germ cell ovarian cancer. Um, it was definitely a long time coming. I had been sick my entire life. Um, I mean, when I was born, I had RSV, I had all these issues, and it just seemed like my entire life, my new normal became being sick. Like, it was just normal for me to be sick, to be in the doctor's office, to be taking antibiotics and prescription meds, and um, yeah, I never really knew. I thought I was fine. Like, I thought I was, you know, good, but looking back, I see that my whole 20 years of life, I was sick, and it ended um, you know, with the cancer diagnosis at 20, that was completely unexpected, completely unheard of, crazy rare. Yeah. Um, you know, and I had... So, like, when you were when you were younger and you were sick, did you feel like you were, like, out of the norm? Like... Yeah, you, not you know? really, just because it was my normal. Like, I just, I feel like I was almost like a high-functioning sick person, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, <laughs> sure. you know, you just it's kind of how our society is. It's like, oh, right. you know, it's normal to have this. It's normal to take pills for your allergies when you're 12. It's normal to get allergy shots. It's normal to have UTIs as a woman. It's normal to have painful periods. We're just like taught that all of this is normal as if our bodies were supposed to function like that way and yeah. basically break down on us. Um, but cancer was a wake up call for me. Um, I had followed, you know, the traditional medical model of just taking the pills, doing the surgery, um, and do, basically doing what my doctor said without thinking about what was happening or connecting with my own body. Um, mm -hmm. But cancer changed all of that for me. Uh, prior to my diagnosis, I had several surgeries trying to address the issue of insanely painful periods. Um, and kidney stones, UTIs, you name it, all of the, the pelvic pain, yeah. kidney stones. And so I had several surgeries, several different antibiotics. Um, I was prescribed hydrocodone for my periods each time I had them. What? Yeah, I was, I mean, and I, it was fine. Like I just tried to, you know, get through it because I felt like a burden if I was, you know, talking too much about, I don't know, it was, it was interesting, yeah. you know, to be so young and going through all that, looking back now, and like, wow, there were red flags everywhere, but I just didn't 
I wasn't even connecting with it. Um, so I went into what was supposed to be the last of the surgeries to try to take care of um, my menstrual pain, and that was to remove four benign ovarian cysts. And they said these are completely common in girls your age, and they're growing quite large, and that's causing all of your pain. So we're going to remove them, and everything's going to be fine, and that's going to be that, and you're not going to have to worry about these painful periods anymore. So... I had had the kidney stone surgery. I had a urinary deflux procedure. I had all these different things. Um, and this was supposed to be the last of my mountain that I was supposed to climb. And so we, my family and my boyfriend and I went into surgery very, um, you know, uh, we were exhausted the way it was just from everything that we had been through. But then we were hopeful knowing this was going to be the last thing and we just had to get through this and everything was going to be good and life was going to carry on. So we got through the surgery and my surgeon came in and she said, yes, everything looks amazing. We were able to remove all of the cysts without taking any of your, you know, removing your ovaries. Um, we cleaned it all up. Everything looks great. There's no endometriosis. Life's going to go on. Hooray. And so, um, after surgery, it was all downhill from there. I developed severe thrush. I was so sick from all the medications. I couldn't eat. I couldn't walk. Um, so wow. we just kept thinking, you know, how could – it can only go up from here. That was kind of just our mentality. We're like, it can only go up from here. It's going to get better. We're My whole family is, like, poly positive. I mean, you know my sister. She's just, like, always yes. bubbly and happy. And so we're always, like – you know, we've got this and it can only go up from here. And, um, so did like the doctors tell you to expect any of these like awkward negative side no. effects after they give you, like, they walk in and they're like, everything's great. We took care of it. Now it's going to be all good. Except minus you can't walk and you have thrush and you feel like yeah. really bad. Yeah. And, um, after, so we were in Iowa city and I, um, am from Lamar's Iowa. So it's about a five hour drive. And so on yeah. day, like post-op day five, we finally get the nerve to drive home. And it took us almost seven or eight hours to get home because I was in so much pain. And I wasn't eating. Oh I wasn't taking my pain meds. It was, it was awful. I was, like, gray. Um, I, got it, I got home, and that night I started urinating blood. And... Oh my God. I knew things weren't good. Um, and so it was day five post-op and I'm calling my surgeon at the hospital, paging her like four or five times a day. And we had a pretty good relationship. So she'd call me back and we'd try to talk through it. But like, I knew something wasn't right and I didn't want to freak my family out, but cancer was never on my radar ever. Like I didn't even know it was a possibility. Um, day six, I still was urinating blood um, it had been, almost and why didn't they tell you to like come back? So I went to the, right so I went to the ER in Lamar's because I was not able to drive five hours back to Iowa city. I went to the ER in Lamar's <laughs> Iowa and they said, Oh, it's just a kidney stone. And I was like, no, that's when I started to be like, what the heck is going on? I know what ki one, I've had kidney stones. So I know what that feels like Yeah. Two. This is not a kidney stone. Like, I need help. But instead, I got more drugs. So I went home, and I felt hopeless. Like, I felt like something was wrong with me. I'm like, am I crazy? Like, is this? See, this is, like, this is what I want to, like, say about this is if you feel like the system is not listening to you or failing you, you have to trust your instincts, yes. and you have to trust your gut. Yes. And if it doesn't even make sense, you know, like we joke about, and even on like Saturday Night Live, there's all the jokes about the commercials for pharmaceutical drugs, right? Yeah. Like, here, take this pill for your blood pressure, but you might, you know, never be able to have a child. Yeah, and, like, you might commit to break die. out and like not walk, <laughs> but here's this great solution. And there's people in the park taking it. And, you know, like you have to like use your brain in a different way because we've been so conditioned to be like, they are the ones that know Absolutely. and we don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no yeah. one teaches us, like, okay, you were born with this internal wisdom that only you have. And, like, yeah, yeah, 
I completely agree. And that was when things started to turn on for me. When I was in that ER, I was in so much pain. And then I was like, are you even like, what? Helping? Yeah. So they send me <laughs> home with more drugs. And I'm like, I can't even swallow them. I can't take anything because I'm not eating. Um, but anyway, day seven post-op, um, I wake up from a nap. So I had finally, like, gotten out of pain enough to nap that day, day seven, for the first time after my surgery. And I remember I woke up from my nap, and it was um, December 19th. So it was a cold day, almost Christmas. Um, my family was all kind of doing their own thing. I was um, in the living room by myself. All the lights were off, and it was, like, that weird point in the afternoon when it goes transitions from day to night and so it was like mm -hmm. very overcast and I felt like completely like discombobulated I'm like what just happened I just woke up like forgetting where I was I checked my phone um and I had a missed call from a number I didn't know and a voicemail um and so I listened to the voicemail and my surgeon and I was like, oh, perfect. Like, she's just giving me her cell phone number. So I stop annoying the hospital, paging her five times a day. And um, so I called her back, just thinking it was nothing. And um, she answered, and she was very quiet. And I still thought nothing of it. Maybe she was at the hospital between things or couldn't talk loud. And then I heard her voice shaking, and she's like, Jessica, I did not even know this was a possibility. I have triple check. I've sent it to pathology three or four times, and I still wasn't going where she was going. And she's like, I don't know how to tell you this over the phone. Typically, this would never happen, but you're five hours away. I know we aren't getting you back. And she kept beating around the bush, and I was thinking, can I not have kids? Like, what did they find? I Cancer was mm -hmm. never there. And long story short, she had to spell it out for me, black and white. You have cancer. It's bad. We need you to get back here today, tomorrow at the latest. We need to set you up with oncology. We need to get another surgery scheduled. She just kept talking, and I couldn't even – I couldn't move. I, I remember I was just trying to hit the red end button and make it stop and I couldn't because I was shaking so bad and um that was where's your parents at point my dad was at work um and my mom was gone and, <gasps> oh my goodness. yeah so I was by myself um but I called my family I called my dad and he was at work and I swear it was like he teleported there because before I knew it, like I opened the door and he was standing there and I'll never forget it. Cause he has these gray uh, sweatshirts for his light gray sweatshirts for his business. And like this whole front was just dark gray, just with tears, like streaming down. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was something I'll never erase from my memory. Um, and we just held each other and we prayed out loud and we cried and that was when everything clicked for me and I knew that this was bigger than even my dad could fix. You know, all my life we've had, I've had problems that my dad could swoop in and save the day and, you know, make yeah. things right or... You know, I totaled my car at 14, and he was there to just make it all better and take it away. <laughs> this was something that, um, you know, that's when I really found my faith, and I really realized, you know, this is bigger than anyone can. No one's going to be able to take this away from me. And um, that's when I knew I had to find my faith and just give it all to God. And... Through it, he has shown me how to listen to my internal wisdom that he's given me and listen to him and simplify health and simplify, you know, everything that happens internally. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, Okay, so curious then, 
so that all happened and it was like this big lead up right and i always tell people and i'm sure you 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 see it too now like after the fact we can see how everything is like an accumulation mm -hmm. of things and triggers and things going wrong but we can't see inside of our bodies so that internal wisdom that you're talking about is so important mm -hmm. because it's all we have you know we can learn we can learn and, and sometimes these situations are such blessings because we do learn and that catapults us into like a, a position to share and to teach yeah. others. And, and maybe somebody will hear you talk about something in a way that they never would have made sense of if I said it even or someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's like, there's all this buildup and we were kind of just like unaware and aware until we have to be aware. So, um, I want to know like, when, because I know it had to be pretty soon after this, did you somehow know that all the things that you used to do as normal, like um, antibiotics and more surgeries and et cetera, et cetera, like when did you know that you needed a different answer, a different path when you got this diagnosis? Yeah. Um, after my oncology appointments, I went to several of them, several. Um, all mm -hmm. over the Midwest to the best of the best, even clinic or even the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, which, you know, that may be great for some people, but what I was given, no one could figure it out. And, um, you know, the, it didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense. And I think, you know, like you said, it's an accumulation and it all leads up, but I almost felt like, okay, I've been playing your game for 20 years now, and this is where it got me. And now my life right. is almost over. Like, you're telling me that you're going to pump poison in my veins to the point that I almost become a vegetable, and then you're going to try to, like, what? You're going to open me up again? Like, I just got pissed. Because, not because I was afraid of what they were going to do, which you I couldn't was. even eat. Yeah, it was, it was awful. And they were like, you know, we're going to do another surgery, a, um, a hysterectomy and, you know, stage you and do all this stuff. And I'm like, I can't, like, I physically cannot. I just, I just can't. Um, so I had to take a step back and I think, you know, I, I prayed a lot about it and I got quiet a lot and I tried to take the emotion out of it because especially with a C word diagnosis, cancer is such a scary word, right? It's so scary. Yeah. But I had to take a step back, take the fear out of it, take the emotion out of it and think logically and think, simplify it all. And instead of making cancer this huge, crazy, scary, complicated thing, like what is it on a cellular level? What feeds mm -hmm. it? How does it live? How does it even happen? You know? That's a good question. And <laughs> and so once I started learning that, it became so simple. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I don't need to cut my body again. I don't need to poison my veins. I don't need you to burn me. I need to heal. And that's why cancer happened is because my body has never had healing. It's never had peace internally. And I didn't know what I didn't know. And I don't blame myself for that, you know? Um, but yeah. once I started learning, it was power. Like I didn't feel scared. I didn't, well, I mean, obviously there's always some fear, but I felt empowered versus like imprisoned by it, you know? Um, and yeah. I was like, man, this is cool. And like, people don't know this and the world needs to hear it and I need to try it, you know? And so then it just became yeah. like a, hell yeah, I'm going to do this versus like, what are you going to do to me kind of thing. And that's how I wanted to live my life. And I'm so stubborn. And when they told me, you know, like, if you don't do this, like, you're going to be lucky if you see 25, which was five years from that point, I was like, one, you're not God and you can't write my expiration date. And two, I'll see you in five years. You know, that was how I felt. And I, yeah. I needed that. I needed that fuel. Because so that's, that's amazing, though, that you could be a 20-year-old and sit in an oncologist's office and not even just one, but multiple. And I remember when you were, this was happening, like, for real, like, <laughs> like live. I remember I had my studio, 
And um, I remember Kim calling and texting and telling me stuff and how like they had certain people like looking at your stuff mm -hmm. and like that everyone was giving you this advice. Like she's, she better not do that. She better not do the things that she, you were saying you were going to do. Yeah. And I was like, she is so smart. Like, Thank you. I just remember that so vividly. Thank yeah. You. And so I just think that it's, we all can learn from you in this moment in time where you have the balls to say, I know better, mm -hmm. you know, and you went and figured out like probably one, two, three, four, five things. And that was enough that clicked for you mm -hmm. to be able to say like, wait a minute, hold on. I don't think I want to remove all my reproductive organs if I don't need to right. or et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. Um, so that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Go on. I won't interrupt. No, you're good. <laughs> I love it. Cause I'm like, I don't know which direction to take it, but, um, yeah. So I just, and then if, the biggest thing too, I was like, why not take a non-invasive approach first? Like, if I'm not SOL, yeah. why not try it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, and it worked. It worked. It was. And so what was your, what was your family, like, what was your family stance on that? Well, um, my oldest sister is going to get so pissed at me for saying this, but if we're going to be raw and honest <laughs> and unfiltered, she's like, because I, I was living with, my oldest sister in Omaha and mm -hmm. she's a tiger like she is a tiger and uh she when I was researching all this stuff she's like I'm sorry but you're not gonna just go drink green juice and do yoga and like you know like think that's enough <laughs> and uh she's like you're in my house and like you're not dying and all this stuff and so honestly it's probably what I needed because then I was like hold up. And I printed off like all these spreadsheets and numbers and highlighters and like research articles. Yeah. And it just made me like dig deeper. And I'd send my family videos of like crispycancer.com and all these different things. And mm -hmm. then eventually, you know, and it was funny because I don't know, it was totally a God thing, but like it, it was just my fuel because I was like, I'm going to show you, like, I know this is going to work and I'm going to show you and you just have to come with me and you just have to trust me. And, um, mm -hmm. that's when I started my blog because I wanted people to see every piece of it. Um, it's so weird. I grew yeah. up in a town of 10,000 people, small town, Iowa, where that's like the most unheard of bizarre, weird thing in ever. <laughs> um, what a blog? No, the holistic treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Blogs too, probably. But I, was like, I know that Lamar's is like the ice cream capital of all Iowa. Yes, it is. It is, and I worked there. So, and I've had conversations with your brother-in-law about cowpus many yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a real thing, and so people are like, "You're doing what? Like, what?" Um even my family, and they were all supportive, but towards the end, they were like, did you see this? Like, this is a quack, and all this different stuff, and mm -hmm. I was, like, determined. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was not my own strength, that's for sure. I didn't have any at the time. I had to borrow it, and that was the smartest thing I could have done, was give my journey to God. And I was just like, make something of this. I don't know what to do with it. It's terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. um, teach me, help me, mold me, shape me, send me. And so I went yeah. um, across the United States to Mesa, Arizona to a little healing hut. And it was not your fancy Mayo Clinic in Rochester at all. <laughs> okay. So first tell everybody the name of your blog. And then how did you find this place? Okay, so my blog is called Joining Jessica. It's joiningjessica.org now. Um, it started as a completely, like, informal, basically virtual cancer diary to kind of show people that supported me um, financially what they were giving to. And hopefully to have something to go back on and be like, it worked, um, which is what happened. Yeah. Um, how I found Oasis, I started reading like crazy, 
um, I was recommended a book called Cancer Killers. And I read the whole thing in like a day, not even. Um, and on the back page of the book was a list of different centers in the United States that have holistic cancer um, treatments and such. So I started Googling, um, researching those, like I said, making spreadsheets, comparing the services they offered with the research about those services and the prices and everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, and Oasis just felt right to me. Um, I called the different doctors there and had phone consults with them. And I said, I'd send them my PET scans and all my reports and my health history and talk through that with them. And um, I spoke with my doctor at Oasis and I just felt it was right. And um, what did they say about you and what was going on? Um, they said I was the young, well, I was the youngest patient that they've ever had. And they were like, this is wonderful because most patients come to us as a dead end. A lot of people do it in reverse. Uh -huh. They start with the invasive. Yeah. And if the invasive doesn't work, then they try the non-invasive. And sometimes that works great. And other times they're too far gone. And he's like, you're young and you are healthy, regardless of what that pathology result says, you will heal. And that's all I needed to hear because I mean, mm -hmm. mindset is so powerful and just to have a doctor that believed in me and believed in how I wanted to heal and everything above, I'm like, okay, let's do this. And so booked my flight and packed my bags and family rotated in and out um, to cover the seven weeks. And it was absolutely insane <laughs> but it was awesome okay so number one do you guys see the power in um finding alignment with the path that you choose right so for some people and like this can be like hard even for me to say and believe but because of what i know about the power of your mindset and belief if somebody if somebody, and maybe it's not as serious as cancer, I mean, literally, you don't have to say one thing is more serious than another, but you just give it more power, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's say somebody decides to go down the medical route, and they're like, oh, okay, well, you know, I know my sister-in-law, this person, and that neighbor, they've had, like, I don't know, eye surgery or whatever, and then you, like, have faith in that system, and so you're like, okay, I'll do that, and, and it works. You know, but for someone else, like you had had too much like going wrong with that path. And, um, you know, like for me with the fertility stuff, I felt it and it was not normal right. and I knew there had to be a different way. And so it would have been ridiculously insane to keep doing something that wasn't working and that I knew was inside my heart wasn't right. So the thing is like, there's always a solution for everyone and you'll find it if you have the faith and you ask for it. So when you find it, you know, like, right. You just knew that that was the right place for you. And also how great is it to call someone that you're asking to help you maybe save your life or heal your body that says you're in the right place. You can totally heal. Like, what's that feel like? Yeah. And that's so right. And that's what people ask me all the time. They're like, you know, are you against chemo? Are you against this? I'm like, I'm not against anything other than, you know, pushing a patient in a direction that's, that they don't feel is for them. Because like you said, yeah. if you're doing holistic treatments and you think this is, this is crap, this isn't going to work, I hate this, this is stupid, it's not going to work. So, it won't. No. Yeah. Right. Totally. Okay, so you found Oasis, and I heard a little bit about it from Kim, and she went down, and she's like, oh my gosh, I felt so good when I, yeah. was, <laughs> when I was there. So, like, do you want to give some, like, examples of your treatments, and, like, how did they, how do they, like, define maybe what you need versus someone else? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when I got there, diet was the biggest thing that changed. I immediately... Yeah. <laughs> Adopted a completely, completely raw, all organic vegan diet, which was extreme yep. coming from college. Um, 
Right. So that was the biggest thing for me to um, get used to and adapt to. Um, but so basically another thing that they did, um, it was a all encompassing, like all open room treatment. And so you're with all these other sick people, right? And you're like in your recliner getting your IV vitamin C. It's so much different than like a medical office where you're kind of tucked in a corner and it's very sterile and you're worried about Cold. infection and you need to wear a mask and all these things. Um, yeah. So that was the environment just like threw me off. I was not used to it. Um, I loved it, but it was very different than anything I was used to. Um, right away, got started on diet. Um, right away, I started high dose IV vitamin C therapy. Um, I got three to four vitamin C infusions a week. Um, I did hydrocolon or colon hydrotherapy, which I was totally <laughs> not into. I was like, poop is weird. Wait, hold I on. Don't poop. <laughs> Uh, wait, were you always constipated? No, but I was like, I was oh, weird okay. about, I was weird about that. Weird about, well now no more, right? right. Like uh, dietitians yeah. have to be like, oh, all about the food. Yeah. Like we have to talk about it all the time. Um, has anybody, have you heard of Bernard Jensen? It sounds really familiar. Familiar. He was, he was a chiropractor. He hasn't actually been dead that long. I talked about this book on one of my videos, like maybe last week, but I heard about him through a different, like holistic, it's a uh, tissue cleansing through bowel management. This book was like one of the first books that I was like, oh my God, no one's told me this. Even after being a dietitian, mm -hmm. I was like, uh, uh, no one told me my digestive system was this cool and this important and like pictures of like crap backed up in your body from sepsis and you yeah. know so um, anyways that made me think about that so it's, if you guys want a book about cleansing your bowels there you go it's crazy how important it is and it's uh it's just insane how much you have in you and how much you're carrying around with you <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes sense. Like, you can be eating all the healthy food you want, but like, if you're not getting that crap out of your body, like, wow. And so, what that did was right. the IV vitamin C would go in and it would detox and do yeah. all of its magic. And um, I also did insulin potentiated therapy, which was a very, very different dosage of chemotherapy. So, they took um basically the same chemo drugs i would have traditionally um let's say i had them at a thousand dosages traditionally it'd be like 0.5 so a tiny 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 dose okay. that couldn't really cause that many harsh side effects um and what they did was i would fast so um, they called insulin potentiated treatment because cancer likes sugar so what you would do is you would mm -hmm. fast for um 18 hours and the next morning you'd go in and you have a nurse sitting with you and they test your sugars, make sure you're low enough, monitor you that you weren't dangerously low. Um, then they would inject the chemotherapy drugs with the insulin um, so that it knew where to find the cancer. And so it was more of a targeted type of medication, um, which just makes sense, right? It makes so much sense. I remember hearing about yeah. this. I'm like, this is genius. Yeah. And like, so, you, you know, like, people are, people know that sugar feeds cancer. And it's like, okay, yeah. starve yourself cells and then let the, the cancer will find, it's like a booby yeah. trap. And I mean, think about a PET scan. Like, they give you a glucose solution that marinates through your body for an hour. And then they put you on your machine and take a picture to see which cells liked the sugar. So it makes sense. Yeah. It literally makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, I felt a little crappy the day of, but, like, I didn't throw up. I didn't lose my hair. I wasn't debilitated by it. Um, so I would do the IV vitamin C, the IPT chemotherapy, and then colonic to pull all of the dye off out because you have cancer dye off that just lays dormant in your body if you don't take with it. And it makes you feel like crap. Yeah. Um, and so green juices, um, obviously high vibrational foods, all raw, green, nuts, seeds, um, uh, 
and then colon cleansing. Those were like the biggest things. And there were other things on the side, like um, infrared sauna and a lot of mindset stuff yeah. and different supplements. Um, but those were the biggest. And exercise? Yeah, they did exercise. We didn't do a ton on site. That was more so something you did on your own. Um, but we, w I would do a lot of walking at night. Just, I stayed in a hotel nearby and, um, did a lot of walking at night as I was able, I was pretty wiped out cause it was a full day of like detoxing and pulling out and putting good in. And well, it's a lot. Yeah. It's like a lot physically for, especially for a body that is like, I kind of like to explain it to people as like, okay, disease and sickness is like a deficit and you have to like come up out of it and then your potential though is unlimited for health but your deficit is like limited to like death mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> cellular death yeah. um so you it's just this transition right and what a beautiful way to like bring yourself back to life but it doesn't mean that it still isn't physically like draining yeah. right yeah because your body's like hardcore you like flip the switch to like pour in like love mm -hmm. energy with everything you could do yes. right and mine keeping with my mindset was big just because okay talk about that like what kind of people were there to help you with that and like what kind of stuff did you do because like I do all my like stuff and I'm curious to know like what they have you do they and not to knock on them but they didn't have a lot of that. Um, they talked about it sometimes. We had a lifestyle uh, meeting every morning. We had to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning before we had to do our coffee enemas, to do all of our certain morning routines. Then we had to be there at 8. I mean, it was a full day. Um, but then we mm -hmm. learn about different things and how to incorporate this new lifestyle with our old life. And, um, there was a little bit of talk of like, you know, the grievance and just different things like that, but a lot of it was on your own. Um, and my family went through some pretty rough transitions of their own at the same time. And so that was difficult, but hindsight, it was probably very good for me to, um, not have the cushion to be honest and mm -hmm. really have to work through those things on my own. Um, but my biggest thing then and still now was like contemporary worship music, <laughs> which is so weird, but yes, I, oh my gosh, me too. I seriously, I'm like Amazon prime and I do like the praise worship yes. music. <laughs> yes. It's, it's totally my jam. And I just, I would just ball and like blare music yeah. and it could be the most happy song and I'd praise him or it'd be like. You know, I have so much pain, but I'm going to give it to you. And, like, you know, um, it just took the words right out of my heart. And I felt like at the time, it sometimes felt like nobody understood. Um, but it just made me feel like I wasn't alone and that there was something bigger than all of this. And um, so I would blare worship music and write blog posts. Um, and that was, like my outlet and my way of, I don't know, working through it all. Um, but yeah. It's funny because it's like super similar to what I found works for me. And I think, so we have to remember that everything is energy and has a frequency, right? Like we talk about the foods and like putting someone on a raw vegan healing diet is like absolutely, I mean, even now that I've gotten way more into like this food actually works in the liver this way and this food actually does this this way it's really powerful to know those things but in general if you just knew when foods are raw they're alive they're yeah. more alive they're more life-giving they're more healing and um vegetables like what else do we have if god give us all the answers and the cures oh. that are natural right like we don't have like a garden of Doritos yeah. for a reason <laughs> i mean like it would be a factory and of course then it wouldn't make yeah. sense but you know like just like that there's frequencies to music and I don't know if you've ever listened to like on YouTube there's self um frequencies there's like miracle tones there's DNA healing there's emotional healing there's like cleanse negative emotions so I used like I listen to that sometimes when I meditate but I've recently gotten into like this like 
worship praise music while I journal. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is, it's just like an enema and eliminations are natural and normal. Like it's natural and normal for us to like get out all of our thoughts and to process those however we can. So whatever you need to evoke that setting, I say go for it. Yeah, it's so cool. It's so cool. And that never like was my thing before really. Um, and it just, it worked. And you just kind of found mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you started your blog and like when you went there, um, I mean, it sounded like kind of from the beginning you, you knew it would work. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and so can you describe, like talk about that and then describe maybe like how you, um, like how you physically felt and also on the emotional scale, how you were feeling like maybe at the beginning of being there. Yeah. Um, so I knew it was going to work. I didn't know how long it would take. Um, I didn't know a lot of the details. I just felt like it was the right path for me. Um, but yeah, it wasn't easy. Um, I went through some different emotional processes when I got there. You know, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> like, what did I get myself into, right? Like, it's always easy to say, you know, I'm all in and this is what I'm doing and it's, it's going to work. But then when you have to put in the work and you have to work out an entirely new life and you have to, you know, see your friends on social media partying for their 21st birthdays in college and, you know, FaceTime yeah. your boyfriend who's doing normal college things or, you know, just all of those types of things were difficult, but, um, I knew there would be um, hardships and whatever, either way I chose. And so I just told myself, this is my hard and it's okay that this is hard and it wasn't meant to be easy. It's going to be beautiful. And um, I'd have to like, you know, talk myself through that. But um, yeah, what was your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> I like, uh, oh, I think it was like, yeah, it was, it was kind of describing your mindset or frame of mind, like when you went there, like from the place of like, I know this is going to work, yes. but it's so hard. Yes. It's still different. So, yes. um, and then like you said that it was a long, they were long days. It was like physically tiring and taxing, but at the same time, right. There had to be like, um, a turning point, mm -hmm. right? Because this stuff works. Yeah. Right. Like the body will turn on and you'll be like, I feel good. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. Cause like how most people don't think about, Oh, I'm going to do a cancer treatment protocol and I'm going to feel like good. And that was it for me. That was it because we, we were like, so I went to treatment at the little healing place, but then, like I said, I had to stay in a hotel cause it wasn't an inpatient. So, um, I stayed at this hotel and I just thought to myself, I don't feel sick. Like I'm sick, but I don't feel sick. I feel amazing. I feel better than I ever have. I'm not taking any medications. I don't have any of the pains that I had. Um, you know, I have the normal detox symptoms, which happen. Um, I didn't throw up. What were those? Just like kind of like Hexmeyer reactions or her, I don't know how you say it. Her, mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you get like headaches or like fatigue, you know, um, yeah. but mo like I was amazed at how amazing I felt. I wasn't throwing up. I wasn't losing my hair. I was able to get up and do my coffee enema and do all my hippie things and get dressed and go to treatment and you know, walk and move. And, um, so it was just different. I thought to myself, like, this is, this is cancer, you know, like I apparently still have this crazy, awful thing in my body, but like, I feel good. And so that means you're winning. Yeah. So it was empowering. It was really empowering. And, um, yeah, I just, I think I was so driven by the fact that I knew it wasn't for me. Like it was for me, but it was for a bigger purpose than myself. And, um, you know, just to create a movement and start impacting the way people look at cancer. And so it was almost like 
a reporter that's gonna go try out this new thing and like tell everyone what it's about like that's kind of how I had to be I'm like okay I'm gonna blog about this I'm gonna I'm gonna try a coffee enema I'm gonna try this I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna just share it and that kind of allowed me to keep that like good healthy emotional balance without like crippling and it allowed me to step outside of some of the heaviness of the situation and be a bigger picture so yeah totally I love that create a movement because one of the like catalysts for me like actually getting off my butt and starting this and like I have my uh, microphone and things for my podcast to like get going. So I'll have you on that. Oh, too, yay. But, um, yeah, we'll be all over iTunes, you know, telling the truth. But that's the exact same way that I feel. And it's like, um, you know, I didn't have cancer, I had fertility issues, but it was all I needed to like, put me over the edge to like learn. And I want everyone to learn like what they need and what they need to know. And yes, like it's time to start a movement of people learning about health. It's like unlearning, right? It's It's unlearning. And so we're not actually hippie. We're actually (laughs) normal. (laughs) You know, it's so true. You got like anyone else is just kind of like confused. And um, so I was at this, like, I was at, I cannot even go to any more of these and like, in 2005, I ran a marathon for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, and my uh, mom had, like, done fundraising for them, and this was, like, before my mom, I don't know if you know this, but my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, like, right before I got married, and still then, like, because that's, like, almost 11 years ago, I, my family, we didn't know this stuff. Even then, you know, it seems like not that long ago, but even then I remember my mom saying stuff like, I don't know if I should do this chemo. It's like, you know, it's drugs, it's like chemicals. And we were the, we were the family members saying, you've got to do it. We don't want you to die. Yeah, no choice. And you know, yeah, we didn't know anything. And so she did it and she's good and she's fine. And now we know, right. My parents are the ones emailing me all the truth about cancer video series buying the books constantly, you know, and we all get it and we see it now, but you know, it's funny. Cause like, even in such a short amount of time, you can completely unlearn things and like, you think maybe cancer for you and maybe for her, but like for, for our family, it was sort of like all of these little things and just like tipping over into like, there has to be some, an- some answer or something different. So like fast forward, I was at this like charity event for finding a cure for cancer and I'm sitting there like kicking myself in the butt under the table going why why am I even like sitting here when I should be at home like doing a podcast like and tagging all my friends that are in this room (laughs) on Facebook because there There is a cure cure. you know Mm -hmm. and that's why like people always say like oh god if we find the cure for cancer we will tell everyone but it's it sometimes is hard to tell everyone because they don't believe you. Um, or maybe they don't, maybe, but you kind of have to get over it, right? Like, I don't care. Like, this is my truth and this is my story. And it really takes sometimes being brave. So thank you again yeah. for telling your story because, um, you know, maybe one person will hear it, maybe 10 people, but you know, they'll tell someone else. So, um, anyways, that's what I, that's what I was going to say was like, we just need more people to, to speak about it and to tell the, that there is um, a simplicity to health, like you said. So um, do you, what else do you want to say about, like, you were there seven weeks? Yes. Uh, I was there seven weeks. And um, after, so after, so I had a PET scan the first week. And then six weeks later, we were going to do a follow-up PET scan to make sure that I wasn't, you know, nothing was metastasizing, that things were staying contained, and we were hoping for some improvement or no growth, you know, that things were just laying dormant, because what I had was grade three, meaning highly aggressive um, cancer. And the weird thing about my cancer was, it was within a teratoma, which teratomas in the ovary have multiple types of tissue. They can have muscle, eyes, 
hair, teeth, <laughs> crazy stuff. Ew. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a little gremlin, four of them inside my body. Um, yeah. And the cancer was found within the neural tissue of the gremlin to put it in okay. a, a layman's terms. So yeah. crazy, like weird, um, how do you treat it, all these different things. So knowing that it's aggressive, knowing that it's still in my body, all these things, we were just hoping that, okay, we were keeping things at bay. Um, so I went in to do the follow-up PET scan at um, it was about six and a half, almost seven weeks. And um, – I remember when they put in the glucose solution, you have to, or in the radioactive solution, you have to sit in a room by yourself, at least at the hospital I went to, you did. And um, I just remember praying and I was like, I know it's working, so I don't really need to see that it's working, but like, just take it away. Like, just take it away and let me like live my life in a and I remember thinking that was such a big stretch and like, you know, you have two sides of your brain like going at all times. And yeah, like, yeah. You're so unrealistic and like, no, you're a badass. Like it was just like all back and forth. <laughs> so I listened to my worship music and I prayed and I cried and I was like, just show me and use or show them and use me as a story. Like just use me. And um, so we did the PET scan later that afternoon we were about to get the results and my two oncologists or my two doctors at Oasis pulled me and my parents in and they were completely straight faced and they were like we have your results they got them earlier than I thought so I was like oh my gosh like this isn't good they're completely straight faced and they sit me down and they're like you know reading the report to me and I'm like I don't understand what any of that means. You need to tell me what's going on right now. Because they, so they were just using, like, um, language yeah, of, like, complete, like, medical yeah. terms. They were reading the report about the Please, stuff. Please, people, yeah. come on. And then, finally, one of my doctors, and he's such a jokester, and he's so funny. He tells pirate jokes all the time. So, they were playing you. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> well, that means that it's gone. And I was like, what do you mean? And, you know, like, just like, <laughs> it was so surreal. And my parents were both with me, and we were bawling and crying and all of those things. But, um, yeah, so I'll never forget that day either. And it's it's pretty special, um, just all of the emotions leading up to that. And so that day I promised myself. I had to work on letting my people pleaser go because I'm very into making people comfortable, avoiding conflict. I want everyone to just be happy and, you know, agree with me. And like, I don't, I'm not like, I don't know. I don't like to shake things up, but I'm still working on it. I don't know if I'll ever be perfect at it, but um, I, that was the day I was like, okay, like you have to, you have to share this. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny how like not only antibiotics and like poor diet and stuff we don't know will add up and add up, but those those emotions are affecting us all like at our cellular level too, all of our lives. And so if there's something in your experience in any way that like makes you feel less than or you know, like it's relationships or whatever it is and um that needs to be addressed as well, right? For full healing Definitely. to take place. We were just talking about this in my group program today about how you can be doing like all the right things with health and diet and still lack results. If you, like you said, if you don't believe it or if you're constantly running and living your life at this low vibration of like negativity or, you know, it's not working or I'm unhappy and complaining about this or that. I mean, it could be all these different things, but like full health and healing is happiness and joy and freedom and peace. Right. So it means all areas of life. And sometimes I think we forget that we can't just like force, even if we're doing it in good ways, like eating 
you know, raw food, like you still got to believe and you still have to know, like, like you said, that there is a higher power at play that is there to support us if we take the steps to go along for the ride. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I just want to tell you something. <laughs> I'm in this like Facebook group. Um, it's like a, it's a private Facebook group and it's like a bunch of like entrepreneurs and stuff. And there's like 40, let me check here. There's, um, 45, over 45,000 women in it. And I posted about oh. like how sometimes, sometimes you just need a perspective mm -hmm. shift when you feel like your body isn't working or whatever. And I talked about how I was going to interview you tonight and how you had beat cancer. And I just want to tell you, like you've gotten so much love oh. from these people and they're all like saying they're so happy for you, even though they don't know you. And there's over 420 people that loved it. Oh and, my God. Like all kinds of comments. So um, I think it's just like, again, there's power and in showing evidence um, that this is true. Gosh, that makes me so happy. Thank you so much. Yeah, you should join this group. I'll yeah, I would love to. I'll send it to you and you can like say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm alive and I'm healthy. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Um, so what would you, what? Like, tell us now, like, what are you, like, what's, what are you doing? We know you're in school. Like, what's your goal, mission in life? Like, how do you want to help people? How are, else are you sharing your story? Yeah. Um, so right now, like I said, I'm in full student mode. Um, as far as like career, that's, that's where I'm headed. Um, I want chiropractic to serve as a vessel to serve patients and love on them and for me my first foot in the door to anything holistic was the fact that I had excuse me I didn't feel like I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> okay maybe I'm not um, yeah uh was <laughs> that I had chiropractors as family and the yeah. initial thought was oh you have a headache maybe you shouldn't take Tylenol maybe I'll just adjust your neck you know and so that was yeah. like the seed you know, and I think mm -hmm. um, that seed grew and grew and grew over time. And when I was ready, it it blossomed, you know. And there was um, years and years and years where it didn't really serve that in my life. But then when, you know, I was faced with that path, I'm like, well, maybe I don't need the chemo. Maybe I need this. Um, and so I hope to be that doctor for people. And I hope to be... Um, a safe place and a judgment-free place for people to come heal. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's what I want to do on the chiropractic side of things. And um, outside of that, I just want to share my story and connect with like-minded individuals and help support them and connect with women and really be an advocate for being your own advocate in your health care and thinking about what you're doing. And it's not that I'm anti -anything. Um, I'm just pro educating yourself and, um, you know, really thinking about what you're doing with your body and really listening. And, um, so I'm hoping to use, you know, my, my website now as just my hub of resources that I have, and it's going to grow and evolve with me as I do on my own health journey. And as I evolve into a doctor role eventually, um, just sharing, yeah. you know, my favorite supplements or, you know, all the different interviews I do or my original cancer yeah. blog will always be on there and there's resources for cancer patients and, you know, so I don't know yeah. what it's going to be. I think it'll just evolve as I can. Do. I'm feeling book, book, yeah. book, write a book, write a book. I would love <laughs> to write a book. That's probably like... Do it. It's easy. You can just sell it on Amazon. Yeah. It's, I have friends that do it all the time, and they know how to make them bestsellers. I'll hook you up. And um, also, you should pitch yourself to Mind Body Green and write an article. That'd be, that'd be a huge goal. A huge goal. Yeah. It's easy. I did it, and they reproved me like the next day. I was like, this is what I eat in a day. Really? You just... I'll, t I'll talk to you after. Okay. Done. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> we got to get this out there. Jessica. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Um, okay. So like last P 
piece of advice, what would you tell someone? Maybe they don't have ovarian cancer, but maybe they're in, like, what's the advice you give to someone who is at a crossroads? Um, maybe they, know, they don't know what to do and they've got a health crisis on their hands. What would you say? Um, one, I would say get quiet and look within and um if no one else existed and no one's opinion mattered and all of those things that are you know stressful and worrisome just went away how do you feel and um give yourself permission to know that you are strong and that you can do it and give yourself permission to know that you are worthy of healing and happiness and everything in between um mm -hmm. and then simplify it and take it down to its small basic level whatever it may be and for me that gave me so much empowerment with cancer and i think if i can do that with cancer which seems like one of the biggest scariest deadliest things that you know illnesses that come on to us um these days if you really take it and break it down and look at it at a simplified level, you'll realize you don't need, you know, a 10 year college degree to know that your body can heal. <laughs> and um, just choose your path. And you don't have to apologize for it. You know, you don't have to apologize if you yeah. want to do the most invasive surgery or try the new trial drug or whatever it may be. But like, really ask yourself what your body needs. And, um, crowd out the noise because it's your journey and it's your path and it's what you have to it's what you have to walk so yeah so you better believe in yeah, it yeah you better believe in it you better because it's like yeah no one else can believe this is the only body you've got mm -hmm. it's your home yeah it's your home it's your soul's home for a little bit of time yep. um okay Awesome. Okay, you guys, is there, do you, I can't see any because, oh, there's, okay. If, does anyone have any questions about anything for Jess or for me or comments? Um, can you see these? Uh -uh. Oh, here they go. How long were you, how long were you in treatment? Coffee enemas, my holistic doctor suggested these. I feel like you were where, like where, I feel like you were where I'm a what? Seriously? LOL. I'm not sure. Oh, um, um, yeah. Coffee enemas? Is that what um, So she was asking, I think it was a joke about coffee enemas, but like maybe, yeah, yeah they worked with their She was like, where first. I was with um, like poop is weird. Um, gotcha. Yeah, coffee enemas are great. Really great. Um, they're super weird. At did first. you, <laughs> what? Did you do them yourself? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I did yeah. them twice a day. Do you still do up? I do, occasionally. Um, not nearly as often as I used to. Um, but yeah, I mm -hmm. still do. I have, I think on my website, I have the exact bucket I use and everything. I've gotten oh, cool. crazy expensive ones on Amazon. And I swear by these BPA-free $5 plastic ones. And I just buy new ones okay. every so often. Um, so it's That's honestly good now. cheap and it's a really good way to, um, cleanse your liver at home and right. Yeah. Um, so I would do them with organic green coffee and it's a, a special coffee made just for enemas. I'll put it up on my site if it's not there already under my Amazon favorites. Um, but you can get it all on Amazon okay. prime. Um, and it's mm -hmm. honestly super, super simple to do once you do it a few times, it just, becomes routine so yeah do, um so and quickly again how long were you there for treatment uh, seven weeks seven weeks people mm -hmm. um and like what do you do now oh boy um I would say diet is my biggest thing um that I think is any everybody eats right so for me, it's like mm -hmm. the food you put in your mouth can really determine the course of 
how you feel and your overall health and vitality. And so the biggest thing I do is eat plant-based and I do a lot of green smoothies. Um, I try to keep the bulk of my diet, fruits and vegetables, and then incorporate some healthy greens like quinoa, healthy fats like avocado, things like that. Um, yeah. Tons of water, a lot of basic things. Um, I like to yeah. um, work on my lymphatic system with rebound, rebounding, um, dry brushing, I like to do hot yoga. Um, I take certain supplements. I take B17 every day. I take vitamin D. Um, those core supplements, and then I still do my IV vitamin C injection about once every two two to three months. I used to do them every other week, and I've eventually tapered off as I'm about three and a half years cancer free now. Um, I do colon hydrotherapy probably every three to six months. It just kind of varies based on how I feel. I like to kind of just listen to my body. Um, but yeah, it's kind of what I do now. This is not amazing. Like just a normal, healthy yeah. life. Um, and I should say, I we didn't talk about this, so I'll just touch on it super, super fast. But if you see on my website, I did have a surgery a year ago. Um, I had a scare. They told me it was a cancer recurrence. Um, so I did go for the hysterectomy, partial hysterectomy last May. Um, it was a completely open vertical incision, major surgery, major, major surgery. Um, and it felt right at the time and I was scared and I did let fear kind of take over, but it did feel right. And I don't regret it. Um, a week after my surgery, the pathology report came back and there was no cancer anywhere to be found. Um, they took 27 lymph nodes, both my ovaries, both my fallopian tubes, tissue from my uterus, tissue from my omentum. I mean, everywhere. It was a complete exploratory surgery. Um, they were like thinking it was going to be a crazy mess and there was nothing. So, um, it wasn't just a pet scan telling me I was cancer free. It was also another wake up call last year that was like, it's nowhere to be found even under a microscope. So, um, a lot of people had confusion with that. They're like, wait, did you have cancer again? But it never came back. Um, they just thought it did. So. Now I also do bioidentical yeah. hormone replacement therapy because I am in surgical menopause. Um, and so that's another treatment that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's amazing to have, like, all the, the history of going through it, like, live on your blog. Well, sorry, I got a phone call. And so, like, cut oh, for shoot. a second. Oh, I was just saying, it's um, it's really awesome that you have, like, the blog for, like, your live kind of raw emotions mm -hmm. to be out, out there. Um, it's such a journey. And I know, like, it's, and it's vulnerable to share yeah. that stuff with people. Um, but it's so helpful. Mm -hmm. It's so helpful. Um, I don't see any other comments, so... If anyone watches replay, replay viewers, post, say, say you're on the replay. You can tag me. You can tag Jess if you want her to answer your questions, if you need um, references to anything she's talked about, or you just want to hang out and follow her around, like on Instagram or Facebook or on her blog. You can look her up. Um, I think that's probably the best way to reach out mm -hmm. to you, right, if somebody wants yeah. to. Yeah. Um, okay. And... Yeah, if, um, and stay tuned, everyone, for more Food Rebel Chats. And if you know someone else who has another cool health transformation story, natural health, um, and you want to be on yourself or you want them to know about this, and just send me a PM and let me know and stay tuned for podcasts coming very soon. Um, thank you so much, yeah, Jess. Thank you. This was amazing. Thank you so much for having um, of course, of course. So I'm going to download this video. Um, I'm going to put it up on YouTube and I'll get it to you if you want to post it on your website. Oh, okay? that'd be awesome. That'd be really great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon and I'll send you that. Okay. About, you know what? Sounds good. My <laughs> green. Okay. Sounds good. Bye everyone. Bye.